So, you call yourself a modern day outdoorsman, looking to do some stock restoration, or perhaps this is the start of a larger project. Well, you've come to the right place. I originally had filled this entire thing out with me guiding you through the process, but then thought, no one wants to watch that. So, it's now more instructional. Let's get started. To be prepared for the stock resto project, you're going to need a few things. I am using Citrus Strip for my varnish remover. I read about a lot of other removers, but I also read about how hard it was to remove the stock Remington 700 varnish. And it came off on the first coat, so I can't really recommend it enough. Job done. A pair of rubber gloves for applying the Citrus Strip is vital to keep the chemicals away from your skin. You can also wear goggles to ensure none of it reaches your eyes, because even if it smells like Tang, it is not a kick in the glass. Whoa. A metal ruler does a fantastic job at removing varnish, all while doing minimal harm to your wood underneath. This was one of the greatest tips given to me by a friend before starting. You can pair the metal ruler with an old plastic gift card. You can cut this into whatever shape you may need to get into any crevices but I highly recommend pairing these with some little chisels, specifically a flat edge and a curved or rounded edge chisel for getting into problem areas. And then absolutely vital, and I cannot stress this enough, don't even get me started on it, you need to have your wooden stock you're working on, because without it, you're going to have issues. Lastly, for bar one, you'll notice the table is covered in sheets of paper. You can buy a roll of paper like this at any hardware store for painting. It's just kind of a nice thing to have on hand sometimes. I'm also using a simple fan for pushing the fumes out of my work area, and I have some saran wrap for keeping the citrus strip moist when applied to the rifle stock. With the varnish stripped away, some other items you may need to clean up will be sandpaper. Surely this doesn't need any sort of explanation, but I bought 100, 150, and 220 grit sandpaper. But with this being a restoration versus a new stock, I didn't even touch the 100 and just stick to 150 and 220. To clean up the sanding, you could use some tack cloths or you could go for mineral spirits and a good old rag. Though I will say that technically the safe way of disposing mineral spirit rags involves metal containers, buckets of water, rocks, hazardous waste disposal facilities, dressing up for the occasion, and a drug deal style drop off of the rags to your local HWD, you could just lay them out in your driveway to uh, dry them out in the summer heat. Lastly, you can buy stock vice for under $100 on the internet, and honestly, that could still be a good option with the project I have planned, but for the stripping of the varnish, I just screwed some 2x4s together, using a bolt for the side to hold the butt end of the stock, and while I first used a PVC pipe end to hold the fore end, I realized I wouldn't be able to reach the ebony wood with the scissor strip, so I opted to remove that side and use a wooden dowel sticking into the fore end sling swivel hole instead. Plus, it honestly looks better on camera, which was an added bonus, but you won't have to deal with that, so just do whatever suits your fancy. As a bonus tip, having a super cool and clean work area would also be ideal, but I live in a small house and I have a lot of stuff, so don't judge me, bro. Once you have everything ready for the job, you can start working. With your stock secure and with all the wood varnish surfaces accessible to you, you can start laying on the citrus strip. I just dumped a bit into an old coffee cup I didn't want anymore and started applying it with a brush from there. You could instead opt for a clean sour cream container or something from your fridge that you plan to throw away anyway. With the entire stock covered in citrus strip goo, I wrapped the rifle stock with saran wrap to keep the citrus strip moist and left it alone for two to three hours to do its work. Evidently, if the citrus strip dries out, it stops stripping away your varnish, so wrapping it with saran wrap or applying multiple coats will be a must to get it all off. After a few hours though, you can come back to your project and remove the saran wrap to reveal your beautifully gooey rifle stock. From here, with goggles and gloves equipped, you can get to work with your plastic gift card and metal ruler. The metal ruler will work far better than the plastic gift card on larger areas, essentially picking up all of the varnish and citrus strips straight down to the wood underneath. Although I don't have a lot of film showing me removing the citrus strip, as working different camera angles with messy gloves and goo everywhere is an absolute pain, here are some nice reenactments.
At this point, you should just accept that you are going to need to redefine the checkering when this is all restored, so just do what you have to do to get all of the varnish off. For difficult spots like some of the curves, the gift card was a great help, though it takes many passes to remove the same as one pass from the metal ruler. For the internals and barrel groove, you can use the gift card again for larger spaces, though I had more luck moving into the chisels to work out the goo in these areas. You just have to make sure that you don't press so hard that you pick up the wood underneath because inside that barrel cavity and in the internals all that space actually means something so just be careful. At some point the majority of your goo will be removed and there may be a few light problem areas but this is when you can go in with some sandpaper and just buff it to heck and back. Work out those anger issues you had with your high school English teacher by increasingly sanding faster and harder because you're adding too much voice to your writing. It's not professional to add that many commas. And Larry Potter filled with Midway USA recommended using 100, 150, and 220 grain sandpaper, but because this stock was already a stock before and not a block of wood like in his video, there was no reason to go as rough as 100. I went over the entire stock with 150 fairly quickly, then moved into 220. There's actually an order at which you are meant to sand stock so that you don't overlook any of the areas of the stock, but yeah, I just kind of eyeballed it. Good old Larry Potterfield with Midway USA also recommended taking the stock outside to use the sun to look for any rough areas or changes in the surface, so you can do that if necessary. But once your rifle stock is sanded, you can use your tack claws to remove any dust from the surface, and if you want to take it a step further, you can apply mineral oil to the surface to clean it up even further. Just remember to put them out in the driveway away from any grass and let them dry out in the sun for a few hours. And with that out of the way, your varnish is removed from your stock and you are at a great starting point for adding ornamental carving or refinishing from this point further. Speaking of carving, I will be changing up my stock rather dramatically, which is what this video series is all about. So if you have any interest in following along or found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, feel free to like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's always a great day to be a modern day outdoorsman.